Hi, everybody. Jim Clouk here. Welcome to the Phenomenal Business Growth Podcast. Now, the next guest here on the program is someone I met a while ago, and we've probably spent two or three sessions together. I say se no more than that, actually. I say sessions. These are these are meetings. Um, and the first meeting was at a phenomenal business coaching event. It was an inner circle event and then another one and then maybe another one. And we've done some Zoom calls and I had to have him on the program. Kenneth O'Neill, welcome to the show. Well, good morning and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It is so great to have you. You are one of the most positive people I know. And I often will challenge you and I'll say, you know, what's your philosophy on this? What do you want to be known as after you pass on to a different place? And you always have great answers. Um, I know you're working on a really neat project. OK, and I want you to tell everyone about it. And that's the circle of gumption. And a lot of people don't know what gumption means. Now, I do because I've been around for a while, but it's a word that's not used too much today. Correct. Correct. Yes, uh, we have found some literature in the past that the word gumption actually used in the 1600s, 1700s, and it was really popular in the 1800s and up even into the early 1900s because I got the word from my grandmother, all right, and the origination of this whole project on creating a uh, a platform for gumption where gumption is a lifestyle. It is the way you live your life in gumption. You hear a lot of people talk about gumption today, but they use the word grit. In other words, mm. put on your uh, big boy pants and getting up, getting involved in life and those kind of things. But gumption actually was my grandmother and the origination started when I used to uh, live in Atlanta, Georgia, and my parents thought it was next to godliness that I go to the farm down in central and south Georgia every summer. And I would always go, and it was on my mother's side of the family. And my grandmother would work with me, and I, you know, we did things like growing cotton and tobacco and peanuts, and we had a great big garden. So I got the opportunity to sit on the front porch and shell peas with her and uh, husk corn. I mean, you know, farm boys will understand all this. And it was just a great time. And I just loved her for her attitude. And she would every once in a while say, Kenneth, you did wrong. You did not use your gumption. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, what is that all about? What is gumption? And so she would tell me, about the characteristics, the traits of someone that has gumption. And I just break it down to the simple things. Be kind to people. Be considerate. Be civil to people. And talk with them in a friendly manner. In other words, don't react to people. Respond after you think about it for eight or ten seconds. Because I had, used to have a dream before I started public speaking, I would make a word from the stage and I would actually speak that word. And then I would reach out and say, oh, no, I didn't mean to say that. Come back, come back. You know, <laughs> but you can't do that. You got these words that you're saying. And so you have to think about it because words are very, very important and they can heal or they can hurt. And the big thing we want to do is to create an atmosphere where we are healing. We are healing. We're comfortable. We're creating an environment or an atmosphere where people feel comfortable. And we can start a conversation and we can keep it going. My ultimate goal is that our conversation is ongoing. We're just going all the time. We might be apart for two or three weeks, but then I see you. Uh, now, if I have been ugly to you in the past, you don't want to talk to me. But if I've been nice and kind and bring something to you that's beneficial, 
then you'll say, gosh, Kenneth, can we keep going with that conversation? And I used to, I, I was on the staff of a preparatory school for kids that wanted to go to the military academy. And I told them when we started, I said, this is going, going to be a one-year conversation that we're going to go. It'll keep on going every day. And in actuality, that is the best way for leaders and managers of businesses or department heads or whatever. That is the best way to have an intentional conversation that always goes on. And you don't have to say, well, Jim, we want to get together at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. No, you can keep that conversation going. You might have an assigned meeting that you go to, but that conversation should go on every time you see someone. Hey, Joe, man, how'd your son do last weekend at the at Little League baseball game? How'd that go? I understand you took your wife out to dinner, man. Where did you guys go? Isn't that wonderful? See, what you're doing is you're concerned about other people and how do they feel? And that is so important. How do people really feel? You know, there's been a survey that was put out in May, I think, of this year. 70% of the people in the United States right now, they are frightful about and actually fear for their safety. They said their number one concern is the safety of their family and being safe. Okay. But that's what I want to do through this platform of gumption. And the name of the book is The Circle of Gumption. That the book is out. It's been out about a year now. And so we want to create this atmosphere where people will speak with us and talk with us. And another one of my projects I'm working on is doing an article on what I'm calling the great debate. The mm. great debate. And I believe through the great debate, we need to have conversation about five major topics. And it's God. We need to talk about God. We need sex, money. Now, those three, God, sex, and money, they're all throughout the Bible. God, sex, and money. Those are the first three. And we need to have conversations. Of course, they need to be age appropriate. But the other two that I've added is that we need to talk about religion. And I'm talking about religion is different than God. All right. So it's a different topic. But the number five is politics. Now, I know you you can feel on the back of your neck, you know, you probably got a little politics. We don't want to do that. You know? <laughs> but if we don't talk about it, if we don't discuss it, we, we know that we already have some heavy duty disagreements. But I believe that we can agree to disagree and we can still care about people so if we really care and if we're kind i mean you know all religions have uh, the golden rule treat people as you would want to be treated but i like to turn that around why don't we treat people the way they want to be treated and most people will tell you i want to be treated kind i want to be recognized Tom Ziegler, one of my mentors and coaches, Tom Ziegler, son of Zig Ziegler, he has the thing he calls air, A-I-R. Okay, we all need air to breathe. Mm -hmm. So we need air every day. Now, the A stands for appreciation. People want to be appreciated. All right. The I is inspired. We want to feel inspiration. We want to inspire other people. We want to equip other people. And then the R stands for recognition. People want to be recognized. That goes right along with the appreciation. Recognized for who they are and how hard they work, but they need air. I, I, I agree I, with everything you say. So the most important person in the room, and I say this when I'm on stage, is that person themselves. And if we understand that people have pride, they have an ego, and the number one concern is themselves and their families, then we can really go through life 
better. And we have to forget, or we can't forget, that that's the case. And we have to realize that even though we're the same person they are, they don't want to hear about us. They want to hear about them, like you said. You know, how was Bobby's Little League game? Tell me about the vacation you went on with your wife. And and people want to talk about themselves. They may not admit that, but their number one fan is themselves. And they're very important to themselves. So I totally agree with you. And a question for you is, is how do we train ourselves to think a little less of us and more of the other? Well, the big thing here is that, you know, we all have lots of habits and lots of things that we do. And the biggest thing is our mindset. What do we think about? And what is that mental input that we get? What, where does it come from? And, you know, we are influenced by the people that we associate with. We are influenced by the books we read, by the music we listen to, the movies we see, television, and we get a lot of input from family and friends. So we have to make an intentional decision and take responsibility for our lives. And we have to be able to share those beliefs, but it's got to be intentional. And the way I look at it is in, you got to have a goal of creating a legacy, creating a legacy. What are people going to say about you a hundred years from now? And how did you feel about your family? What kind of legacy moments do you have with your family? You know, little children, they are like a sponge mm -hmm. and they need great examples. They need great mentors. They need people that care about them and they need to share things. And one way of doing that is to have this legacy that you want to leave, which is, by the way, leaving it in someone and not just leave them a, a home, a car, or a million dollars, but leave them with those memories that you create. Yeah. You got it. And the le like a, a legacy, I mean, I could talk all day about this, but one legacy thing would be every day, if you got kids, and they, of course, learn from seeing more than they learn from listening and you telling them. So they love to see the example. But you could write a little note and put in their lunch every day and say, hey, great, you're doing a wonderful job. I can't, boy, I'll be, you're going to have a great day at school. But I cannot hardly wait for you to get home this afternoon and we're going to play uh, catch. All right. So it's a great legacy moment. Another thing would be to make sure your spouse or your partner, you go to dinner once a week. I mean, there's just lots and lots of these things because see, the purpose is to create legacy. So the things you do every day, they've got to be bringing you closer to your purpose. All right, now my purpose in life is to live a life of integrity and when I do that, the byproduct is trust. The byproduct of yes. integrity is trust. Now, remember, we were talking about this life in the circle of gumption. And that whole thing has got to be a positive atmosphere, a positive environment that we create. So if we can create this atmosphere, we can create that future. What do we want to look like? What do we want to be like? What are people going to say? We can create it, but we've got to be intentional in our efforts. And we have to do it persistently and consistently. 
and the I big totally totally agree with that and i want to segue into phenomenal business coaching like i said earlier on in the beginning of this discussion that's where i met you that's where i see you often how does that help you with your goals you want to leave a legacy and i know there's just so much in the inner circle and Howard's been doing this for 25 years, and he brings people together. It's a great community. I often tell people it's like church. Great community. How does it help you achieve your goals? Well, you're right on the legacy part, but I believe that, I mean, Howard has done such a phenomenal job of pulling this all together. In fact, I call Howard the phenomenologist he's a phenomenologist you know <laughs> and that's and a real word not, and i and that's what i didn't make that word up it's really a real word okay. but he was shocked when i told him that one day i said you know you are a phenomenologist and he said is that a real word i said yes so but what he's done howard has created this community through inner circle phenomenal products and the phenomenal business coaching system. And it's all about the process and building uh, this whole community. And this is a community of all of this uh, that Howard has created, all right? And we talk about community. A lot of times we talk about your local neighborhood or, but I look at community more on a, a micro basis where if you've got, if you belong to the Rotary, your Rotary Club is actually a community. Mm -hmm. What you need to do, three major things. you got to support everybody in the community, everybody. So all of the people in the inner circle, all of the systems, all the policies, all the coaches, all the mentors, they support everybody. We support everybody. And the way we do it mainly is that we need to know what their goals are. What do they want? All right. So we want to support them in their working toward their goal, working toward their legacy. All right. So support's number one. Number two thing. Oh, and by the way, the best way to get where you know what they want is to have those conversations. That's where this all comes together is through effective communication. So we want to support them. Number two is we've got to give people hope and encouragement. And the hope says things will get better. Tomorrow's going to be better than today. Next month will be better. Next year's going to be better. And then we need to continue to encourage them in all of the things they're doing. And the third step, is to actually be accountable. We all need to be accountable to each other. And the way that you can be accountable is to have these conversations again. Effective communication is so important. And when you're having the conversations about the accountability, you get feedback. How are you doing? Let's say somebody's trying to lose 20 pounds. Mm. That's their goal. That's what they're working on. So we can give them encouragement on getting the right amount of sleep, the right amount of their diet, the right amount of exercise. So we can give them that, but we've got to have the knowledge to make sure we do it. Then the accountability part comes when you say, how are you doing? Give them feedback. You talk about, so you get, how are you doing? So, oh, you've lost 10 pounds. You're halfway there. Gosh, that's so great. All right. So, yeah, this is a community and we're building it as we go. And that's why Howard does his uh, quarterly conferences to bring people together. And we can, on a side basis, we can talk, we can support people, we can encourage people, we can have conversations. All right. So uh, in putting this whole system together, uh, and Howard is always standing right there, total support. You know, he's always encouraging us and giving us hope. And then he holds us accountable. 
he has a conversation with us. How did you do on that? How's that going? Howard and I are putting together a boot camp for September, sometime in late September. And uh, so I've been doing all the legwork and everything. And so we're going to start advertising that uh, probably next week. So, but it's all about this circle, the circle of gumption, having the right attitude, the right uh, atmosphere, and then sharing it with other people and creating that legacy. And so people can, no matter where they've been, all right, whatever they've got in their life, all the baggage, my whole point is we need to stay away from that. You know, don't live in the past. Live in the present because it is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Yes. I tell people all the time, live for today, live in the present. We can use the past because if we don't, you know, look back at our foundation, we're starting over again. And I believe we should look to the future, but not always wanting more and more way out there appreciate what you have today have some contentment now you talked about the boot camp you're putting together with howard and howard has boot camps all the time i recommend to people who want to kind of dip their toe in the pool of phenomenal business coaching to attend a boot camp would you agree i I would And, and he goes through the whole system and explains it and it's a great opportunity to learn from uh, all, you know, all the experiences that he's had. He brings all that to the table. And so he's very willing and open to share all that. So to get started, uh, the boot camp would be a great way to do it. And as you said, he does, uh, I know he does at least four a year around the uh, conferences that he has. But uh, he also additionally adds uh, as we go through the year. Oh, he does. He does many boot camps. He does the minimum of the four quarterly, and then he'll do some others, um, such as he's doing with you. I'm assuming that that's an additional boot camp. That's an additional, yeah. um, The thing about Howard is when you first meet him, you may not believe that it's about you and the community, you might think, well, here's another businessman. And, you know, he just wants to, you know, have some, some new clients and he wants to have some transactions. Really? He, he gets up every day to serve others. That's right. And that's where he gets his kick, meaning that's his charge. Uh, he gets excited to help others. And that's why he puts boot camps in place and these are generally not expensive one day events to get a lot of value he gives a lot away really for nothing uh, financially nothing and you're going to walk out of there saying hey i picked up a lot of great stuff and many of the people end up joining the inner circle can you talk a little bit about what people might expect when they're part of the inner circle now i know you talked about it in general terms but let's say someone goes to a boot camp okay and they're like i love this um they can then go right into the inner circle right join up right they get can join all up. these benefits that you guys get right and the benefits actually come from all of the systems and the policies that have been put in place and we always say Follow the process. So the process is there. And the big thing is that we believe in a well-balanced life. In other words, we want to make sure that you, the great quality of your work life balances and agrees to the quality of your home life. So we do the assessments on individual or personal, and then on the business. So where is your business in the assessment? And so you've got the different processes and systems in a business. You know, we're talking about leadership. We're talking about the operations, talking about the marketing, we're talking about the revenues. So all those things we will examine right up front. All right. And then once we get them set, then we can take the three we were talking about, supporting, giving encouragement, 
and holding people accountable. So all of those programs are available for the people that sign up for Inner Circle. And you can you can actually sign up for different levels. And that's what the boot camp is all about, to tell you the different levels that you can get started in. And, um, but every week, there are courses, there are projects that we have that we're working on, and all of that training comes through in our meetings. Every Tuesday morning, we get everybody that comes together on a Zoom call. And then all through the week, there will be things on marketing, uh, there'll be things on sales, uh, bookkeeping, different things like you know, from an operation standpoint. So, I mean, it's priceless, the amount of information you get. And so it's kind of like, uh, you know, you can really get out of it what you put into it. I mean, it's all, oh, yeah. he's got it all lined out and laid out there for you, but you're going to have to take the step to get involved, sign up for the things that you want, the things that you need, based upon the assessment, based upon your individual coach that you work with. And there's a lot of coaches bringing a lot of material uh, to the group. Yep. And regardless of what you do in life, when you engage a coach, maybe you um, are a golfer, maybe you're a swimmer, maybe you're a business owner. You've got to follow what the coach says. So you have to say, okay, I'm going to put my pride aside a bit and I'm going to listen because these are successful people at Phenomenal Business Coaching. It's not just the coaches there, but the people in the room at Inner Circle are all products. And some of these people have graduated out and been able to sell their business for many multiples because that was – their desire and some of them have come back to help coach because they learned so much from Howard and the other coaches. I want to let everybody know if you want some free training, Howard has offered that. And there's a link in the description of this podcast, click on it and learn more. Also, I'm going to have Kenneth's information as well in the description of this podcast. If you want to reach out to him, you can. And my information is there. And Howard's email is there. So there's no wow. excuse. If you want to learn more, it's all there. Kenneth O'Neill, I want to thank you so much for your time today. We could talk for days, I know, and we'll get you back on the podcast again soon, but we need to go. So thank you so oh. much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Good to see you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.